This is worksheet three of the ionic compounds packet. And in this worksheet, we're basically going to learn to do the reverse of what you learned to do in worksheet two. So in worksheet two, you were given a formula, the letters and numbers that symbolized a compound, and you were learned how to come up, or you were taught how to come up with a name. Learned, haha. <laughs> Uh, so in this worksheet, we're going to do the opposite, which means that the goal of this worksheet is if we give you a name, like potassium oxide, then you can tell us the formula, the symbols and the subscripts that would represent that. So the really important thing to remember here, because this is a little bit more challenging than worksheet two, okay, eye on the prize here, all compounds are neutral. Now, what does that mean? That means if you add up all the positive charges, those would be coming from the metal, the first thing in, in the compound, and all of the negative charges, those would be coming from the, the non-metal, the second thing in the compound, then they have to add up to zero. Okay, now remember, a little vocabulary, those charges, the plus and minus numbers, those are actually called oxidation numbers. So if I say oxidation number, I just mean the charge, the plus or the minus number. Okay. All right. Now, the other key here is going to be to learn and really remember the difference between a superscript, a number written up high, and a subscript, a number written down low. So we'll kind of talk about what that means as we go here. Okay. So here's what you're going to do. Let's say, for example, that we give you the name sodium oxide, and we want you to write a formula for this. Okay, now, first of all, you need to remember that sodium is symbolized Na, and that oxide is really the name of oxygen when we put it in a compound, right? Because we've just added that IDE on, which we learned in the last worksheet. So oxygen is symbolized with an O. All right, now, what you're going to do then, so we're on step one, is you're going to look up the oxidation number, the expected charge of sodium. And we can do that by looking and seeing that a sodium is in the first group or family of the periodic table. So those all have a plus one charge. So you'll note that. And oxidation numbers, the charges, the plus and minus numbers, are always written as superscripts, these little numbers up high. So a superscript, that number up high, that has a plus or minus number on it, is sort of giving you the count of how many protons versus how many electrons, right? So a plus one charge means you have one more positively charged proton than you have negatively charged electron, right? Okay, so superscripts are the charge or the oxidation number. Uh, and we're also going to look out the oxidation number of the nonmetals, so in this case oxygen. So we see that oxygen is in the sixth family on the periodic table, so they all have a minus two charge. Okay, um, and now we're going to actually sort of write these two things side by side. Yes, we've got sodium with a plus one charge, oxygen with a minus two charge. And now we want to figure out, okay, how many sodiums that each have a plus one charge would we need to combine with how many oxygens that each have a minus two charge in order to get a neutral compound? one where the pluses and minuses add up to zero. Now, some of you could just do this sort of in your head, right? You could be like, okay, well, if I had one sodium and it's got a plus one charge, and I have one oxygen with a minus two charge, that wouldn't be enough. I'd, I'd have too many negatives. But if I added in another sodium, well, now each sodium has a plus one charge, so I have a total of plus two here, right, and that minus two, well, that adds together and that gives me a total of zero, so I must have two sodiums and one oxygen. And if you can do that, more power to you, fantastic, stick with it, okay? But if you're like, ooh, that's a lot of math, I don't know if I signed up for that, we can teach you a little sort of cheating technique, which we will call swap and drop, legalized cheating. Okay, here's the cheating way to do this if you don't want to sort of think through this mess. If that's like, oh, that's scary, forget it, do this. Take the superscript that's on the sodium and bring it down to the other side of the formula, meaning bring it over to the oxygen and write it down low. 
and take the two that's on the oxygen, bring it to the other side of the formula, so bring it over to the sodium, and write it down low. Okay, so we call it swap because the number that was on the sodium is now going to be on the oxygen. The number that was on the oxygen is now going to be on the sodium, so they're swapping numbers. And we call it drop because instead of being superscripts, they're now going to be subscripts. Why? Because now these numbers that we've swapped and dropped as subscripts are not representing the oxidation number, the sort of tally of protons versus electrons, but they're going to represent how many of each atom, how many sodiums versus how many oxygens we need in the formula to make it neutral, to make the charges add up to zero. And so that's why, and this is a really important thing, subscripts do not ever have plus or minus numbers on them or plus or minus signs on them, excuse me. It's because they're not representing oxidation numbers anymore. They're not representing how many protons versus electrons are in each atom. Now they're representing how many of each of the elements we're going to have in the compound. Okay, now remember as a little final step here, if the subscript is 1, like it is on oxygen, you don't actually have to write it. If you do, it's not going to get marked wrong. Okay, and so what this formula is telling us, don't forget, is that we'd have two sodiums, right, because so we got this little two here, combining with one oxygen. Why? Because each sodium has a plus one charge, and each oxygen has a minus two charge, and so if we added that all up, it would add up to zero. Okay, so it helps if you kind of think about why you're doing this, and then you won't make the little common mistakes like people writing... Uh, a negative 2 as a subscript when it really should just be a 2, right? Because negative 2 sodiums, uh, how can you have negative 2 sodiums, right? I mean, are there like holes where 2 sodiums used to be? That doesn't really make sense, right? So kind of think about what you're doing. And honestly, if, if you can just think through it this way, instead of swapping and dropping, that's perfectly fine too, okay? So um, we're going to have you go on, and there's a couple examples here. Okay, so you can see there's a little bit of space here where you can write the symbols with their oxidation numbers. And then if you want to actually make arrows and go, okay, well, potassium would have a 1, and the chlorine would have a 1, so now I'm going to write K1, Cl1, or KCl. That's fine, right? Or here, sodium has a plus 1 charge, so I'm going to swap it down here. Sulfur has a negative 2 charge. I'm looking those charges up on the periodic table, right? So I bring the 2 down here, so now it's going to be Na2S1. Or if you don't want to write the 1, you don't have to. Okay? This column here, you already did this on the, on the previous worksheet on worksheet 2. Right? This is just where we're counting up. Okay, so how many atoms do we have in the compound? So we add the subscripts, right? So here there was one potassium and one chlorine, so that gave us the 2. Here there were two sodiums and one sulfur, so that gave us the three. All right, so um, I want you to go on and finish um, at least this page of the worksheet because there are two more pages after this that we're going to continue uh, when we get to the class. So you want to at least make sure you have this page of the worksheet done so that we can check that um, and then move on in class.